AQA, A-level physics, simple harmonic motion, SHM. And we're going to be looking at this chunk of the specification. Now, this is a, a mass on a spring bouncing up and down. Uh, and this mass is oscillating with simple harmonic motion. This oscillating motion is simple harmonic motion. It goes ooh, and then ooh, and then ooh, and then ooh. Okay, now this is an idealized system, uh, and it's a very useful model for lots and lots of situations in real life. You may be thinking, why, why the hell do we have to worry about a mass bouncing up and down on a spring? Well, a mass on a spring approximates to, okay, so this is a building, a skyscraper, and on a windy day, this skyscraper will oscillate as well, okay? So engineers, architects need to know about SHM. It has a mass, it has a stiffness, and under certain circumstances, it will oscillate, and engineers need to work out the forces acting on it. This washing machine, okay, this oscillates. Um, if you go on the spin cycle, it vibrates and it oscillates all over the place. Okay, so there's various things you can do to try and stop it from wobbling and oscillating. But once it gets going, it oscillates. In the engine of a car, there's all kinds of things which might oscillate if you give them a chance. A car going over, if you go over speed bumps and things, then your car bounces up and down. So we have the, the suspension of a car tries to minimize the effect of that by absorbing the energy. But mechanical systems, there's all kinds of oscillations which involve masses and basically springs or springy things. And even in chemistry, this is a water molecule. And the water molecule with the two hydrogens, uh, under certain circumstances, these, these molecules will oscillate as well, particularly if you put them in a microwave oven. There are lots of examples of a mass and a springy system and oscillations, uh, loads and loads of examples. What we do look at is we look at this model. We look at an idealized kind of very, very simplified situation, which we can then apply to real life situations. Now, this is a description of SHM. It's not a definition. We'll look at a definition later on. Now, displacement against time is sinusoidal. In other words, it's a, in this case, it's a cosine wave. At AQA, you do a cosine. At OCR, we do a sine wave. But it is sinusoidal. It's a cosine wave. It's cos something is involved in the equation. So displacement against time, we have here, this is our equilibrium position. And then the object, uh, its displacement from the equilibrium goes positive, negative, positive, negative, sinusoidally. The maximum displacement is the amplitude and the time it takes for one oscillation is the period. We're not talking a wave here. We are talking an oscillation. Okay, here are some equations. Uh, you'll probably hopefully be doing A level math. So X equals A sine omega T. X is the displacement. A is the amplitude cos omega t. Now you will remember in the last video, don't worry too much about this, but remember that theta over t was the angular velocity, wasn't it? So omega t is theta, so cos theta, this imaginary angle, is omega t. Omega is the angular velocity. I think the real equation we should learn for that one omega equals 2 pi f, 2 pi over t or 2 pi f. I say that omega in, in SHM, when I teach it, I say omega isn't, don't think of it as the angular velocity. 
it's just a constant related to the frequency. Yeah, it happens to be measured in radians per second, but it's a constant related to the frequency omega. And then F equals one over T. We're pretty familiar with that. OK, uh, when we use this equation here, make sure that your calculator will be in radian mode. Uh, because omega will be given in radians per second. So your calculator needs to be able to handle that. And then when you finish that question, don't forget to put it back to degrees or you'll get some weird answers later on. So have a go at this little baby having a little bouncy bouncy. And the answers are in three, two, one. There you go angular velocity and to get the displacement at a certain time we use that equation there now velocity we've talked about displacement against time being a cosine uh, velocity against time will be a negative sign now how do i get to there there's a few ways remember that v is dx dt yes uh, so if you differentiate your equation for x, you're going to get an equation for v. Also, dx dt means it's the gradient. So look at the gradients on the graph. Here, the gradient is 0, so v is 0. Yeah. Uh, here, the gradient is 0, so v is 0. Uh, here, the gradient is a negative maximum. Here, the gradient is a positive maximum. So by thinking about the gradient of the X graph, we can kind of guess what the V graph is going to look like. But then, as I said, if X equals A cos omega T, if we differentiate that, we get V equals minus A omega sine omega T. Now, Strictly speaking, at AQA, you don't need to know this equation, but note that it is a negative sine wave, okay? A negative sine. You actually use a different equation for V, which I'll do very soon, okay? So now we can work out the velocity of the mass at any point in time. Uh, the maximum velocity well, looking at this equation, can you figure out the maximum velocity V max would be when sine omega T equals one. So V max would be minus a omega. That's useful if you want to work out, let's say, the kinetic energy of the system to work out the maximum velocity a omega. This is the equation that you you use it uh, aqa and just a little bit of trigonometry uh, and from v is minus a omega sine omega t we get this this lovely equation here uh, v equals plus or minus omega root a squared minus x squared it's on your formula sheet don't panic basically if you need to work out the velocity you should be able to do it using this equation, although I, I, I would prefer this equation here, but whatever. So, armed with those lovely equations, do this one. Uh, pause the video, pen, paper, calculator, get it done. The answers are in three, two, one. There you go. So we've done displacement, we've done velocity, now acceleration, that's the third one. These three graphs here, be able to sketch them. It is a common exam question, be able to sketch them. If X is a cosine, V is a negative sine, and A is a negative cosine. Remember that. How do we get there? Now, again, we can get there by looking at the gradients. So uh, dv dt, the gradient of the v graph. Well, let's have a look. Let's go blue. So at this point, the gradient is zero. So the acceleration is zero. At this point here, the gradient is zero. 
so the acceleration is zero. Uh, at this point here, the gradient is a positive maximum, so there you go. At this point here, the gradient is a negative maximum, so there you go. So by looking at the gradients, you can get an idea of the shape or by differentiating, because you know how to do that, because you do maths. So if V is minus A omega sine omega T, if you differentiate that, you get A is minus A omega squared cos omega T. And we can sub because X, X is A cos omega T. So we end up with this equation, A equals minus omega squared X, which is very important. OK, A equals minus omega squared X. It's a very important expression. Uh, and what does it tell us? Well, it, now omega is a constant. Remember that omega is a constant. So it tells us that A is proportional to X, but in the opposite direction. That's what the minus says. Acceleration is proportional to displacement, but in the opposite direction. If I have a mass in equilibrium on this first diagram, let's go red. On the first diagram, the mass is in equilibrium. If I pull it down, if I give it a displacement downwards, then it will, when I let go, it will accelerate upwards. If I give it a displacement upwards, then it will accelerate downwards and the acceleration and the displacement will be proportional to each other. This is actually our definition of SHM. When the acceleration of a body is always directed towards a fixed point, which is the equilibrium position, and is directly proportional to its displacement from it. That's the, that's the definition of SHM. Just remember this equation, A equals minus omega squared X. So here's some sums for you to have a go at. Pause the video, pen, paper, calculator, get it done. And the answers are that 